KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson, in partnership with the Guam National Olympic Committee and Guam's delegation to the 2021 Tokyo Olympics, Biba Team Guam. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorite favorites for over 45 years. Now on primetime, Adaloop has announced major changes to the All Rise program. Plus, with still no details as to how American Rescue Plan funds will be spent, Guam's Republican Party once again presses the governor. And after several months, the Guam Guard turns over control of the UOG vaccination clinic to public health. Hoffa and good evening. I'm Tyler Matanani. Although the eight months wait continues for all rise payments, Aloop has announced another major change to the program. It wasn't through an executive order, but a press release changing a mandate in the Rise Act law requiring mayor's verification of residency. The change ends the long lines at mayor's offices of hundreds of residents hoping to one day get the one time all rise stimulus check. Hallelujah. Just before 9 o'clock Sunday night, Adaloop issued a press release announcing Acting Governor Josh Tenorio has ordered DRT to accept all RISE applications without the verification and instead verify residency with mayors after the applications are submitted. Mayor's Council of Guam President PD Mayor Jesse Alleg not only praised the decision but looks forward to future ways to streamline government services such as improving technology at their offices. And with the lieutenant governor's help, there's some money that uh, will do this for us. And so, uh, you know, he's reconfirming that commitment that, you know, we'll continue to work at, at getting our, our technology upgraded so that this information is readily available to the agencies that, that need it. And residents don't actually have to line up and, and come to the office for this, this type of information. The decision to scrap the residency paperwork comes as senators from both sides of the aisle have introduced measures to streamline the application process. A public hearing has been fast-tracked and is scheduled for Thursday. All RISE applications are still not available as DRT is still working on an online application program which they've indicated could be ready by the end of this month. The Republican Party of Guam is renewing their call for the governor and her administration to show the people their plans on how she intends to spend the more than $600 million in American Rescue Plan monies that Guam has had in the bank for more than two months. In a statement issued by the GOP today, they question whether the governor even has a plan. The Republican Party of Guam simply asks the Leon Guerrero administration to be honest and transparent and simply advise the people of Guam on how these federal dollars will be spent. Adeloup has held off on releasing any ARP money or a plan, at first claiming that it was waiting for the public comment period on the interim final guidelines issued by the U.S. Treasury to be closed on July 17th. When that date came and went, BBMR said they now had to wait for Treasury to review all the comments and issue its final rules, something that might not happen until after budget session begins. Senators like Senator Joanne Brown say enough is enough. We're well into past half of the year uh, and we still, don't have, we still don't have a clear picture of information from the administration on how they are going to address prioritizing the expenditure of these funds. After Guam received the $600 million in ARP money, senators in a united front and at the request from the governor submitted their spending plan and were hoping to get Adeloops in return as they map out the fiscal year 2022 budget. Speaker well, Teresa Lahi on the link. It's like seeing half the picture. I, I agree. I don't think um, I'm satisfied that... Uh, we're going to sit in there. We're going to decide a spending plan for $700 million while there's $600 million sitting out there to be spent, uh, you know, any which way. The Republican Party of Guam in its press release on Monday questioned whether the governor was holding on to the money until 2022 as she seeks re-election. I hesitate to comment on the politics of it all because that's just going to really... Um, 
I mean, that people are saying that or feeling that is, it's, 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 um, it's very troubling. It shouldn't, we don't have to go down that road, right? I feel like if we could just get these plans on the table and have open discussions, and then we wouldn't have to speculate as to what the reasons are. Speaker Cholahi is now acting lieutenant governor. We asked on the link last week whether she would flex those powers and ask BBMR to give her ad loop spending plan. KUAM News has confirmed today, though, that BBMR Director Lester Carlson is in San Francisco for bond refinancing talks. And DOA Director Edward Byrne is in Washington, D.C. with the governor as she meets with Biden administration officials, including the U.S. They Treasury. They were lacking the credits needed to get their Mayor's Council of Guam employees continue to wait for their COVID deferential pay. Although MCOG Executive Director Angel Sablon was informed by the Department of Administration that employees would be getting paid last Friday, that didn't happen. According to Sablon, he has since been told that COVID differential pay, which will cover 11 pay periods, will be paid this Friday. The last time MCOG employees received the differential pay was in January when it was being paid through CARES Act funds. It's not clear what funds are being used this time around. Department of Revenue Tax confirms another batch of tax refunds will be paid out this week. 2,077 error-free returns from 2020 filed on or before April 15th of this year and prior years, totaling a little over $6.6 .6 million. DRT also announced that it processed and transmitted to the Treasurer of Guam additional EIP-3 program payments for release. From April 10th of this year through July 23rd, DRT processed over 82,937 payments, totaling $216.2 million. The search continues for the two mariners that went missing last week. The two men identified as Yao Wei Quinn and Yun Lu Red departed Saipan on the morning of Sunday, July 18th, and were expected to arrive on Guam later that night. Coast Guard's Chief Gail Paulino. We do have a couple of assets searching today, uh, which is a Coast Guard C-130 and a uh, Navy Mark VI. Paulino said they did receive one phone call this past Sunday of a possible sighting of their 12-foot black Kodiak skiff that was coming into the reef. The island. Uh, we did get pictures, but unfortunately, it, uh, it wasn't clear enough to get a, a positive uh, identity. According to the wife of one of the missing men, the last text message she received from her husband stated that they could see Guam. If anyone has any information on the missing men, contact the Coast Guard Command Center at 671-355-4824. Just two years after opening its doors in the Tumon Sands Plaza, Red Lobster Guam has officially closed its doors. Citing the economic impact of COVID, President and COO of Triple J Enterprises Jeff Jones says they did their best to try to navigate through this uncharted territory, but have exhausted all options and made the difficult decision to close the restaurant permanently. Outback Steakhouse, which is also owned and operated by Triple J Restaurant Group, will remain open to serve the people of Guam. The Guam National Guard has officially turned over the reins of running the vaccination clinic at the UOG Cabell Field House to public health. We've been in the COVID fight for about 16 months now. And uh, as you know, the Guam National Guard is kind of like the help button. We'll come into play, we'll get activated in times of need, in times of crisis. And then when things seem like they're under control and the agencies of the government of Guam can, can manage, it's time for us to uh, gracefully bow out and uh, return to our normal operation. So that's what we're seeing. Uh, the field house on Saturday was our last day of operational control. According to Guam National Guard spokesperson Mark Scott, the Guard instead will still provide support at the UOG Cabell Field House until July 31st, when it's officially scheduled to close its doors. Although the new numbers have not yet been released as of Sunday night's Joint Information Center update, Guam remains 648 shots shy of achieving adult herd immunity. The governor will not restore the island in PCOR 4 until that goal is reached. 
Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. Social distancing may be the new norm, but connection will always be our tradition. Through good times and tough times, we remain connected with you. Mass may be the new fashion, but protection will always be our style. You can always count on us to protect the things that matter the most. Sanitizing may be the new routine, but caring will always be our practice. We care about your loved ones and the things you value the most. And as we welcome our new normal, one thing remains certain. We will always be here for you. We're open and ready to serve you. Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Man, Pizza Hut packs so much meat in their meat lovers pizza. Six meats, over a pound of meat and cheese. This thing's a monster. Grab a meat lovers pizza before it's gone. No one out beats the hunt. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus, we have the perfect Jeep for your summer adventures. Whether you're going off-road or just getting ready to hit the beach down south, make this the summer event you find your Jeep. Like the 2021 Jeep Wrangler or the 2021 Jeep Gladiator. Equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Call us at 477-7807 or visit our website at carsplusguam.com to schedule a test drive today. Cars Plus, driven by you. Ooh, <laughs> Just wash it later, bro. Well, ask your mommy to do it for you since you still live at home. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to do my own laundry. laundry. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Roundup, program advisories, and promotions. Sign up for the weekly KUAM Digital Digest today on KUAM.com. Welcome back. Turning our eyes to education, Superintendent of Catholic Schools Dr. Juan Flores says they're ready to go for the opening of the new school year. Only a few schools will be offering distance learning in addition to face-to-face -face instruction. Additionally, they've received a majority of the equipment funded through federal money, such as the emergency stab stabilization funds to ensure school safety. Probably the most significant that have been in place now for a couple months is getting the the um, plexiglass sneeze guards in the elementary schools for the classrooms, sneeze guards for cafeterias for the high schools, HEPA filters in all the classrooms, all of this, the rooms will be set up so there'll be at least a three uh three feet distance between students in, in any direction flores also says there is no mandatory covid vaccination policy but there will likely be a mask mandate in place no matter if a student is vaccinated or not the first catholic school to start is father duenas memorial school which resumes class next monday 
The Guam Department of Education will be hosting a virtual orientation this Saturday for all parents, students and guardians. The session will be conducted via Zoom and live streamed on GDOE's Facebook page. The discussion is open to all districts and will allow stakeholders to ask questions to GDOE leaders as students prepare to return to face-to-face -face instruction next month. Saturday's virtual orientation starts at 9 a.m. 192 seniors participated in today's Grad and Go Rainbow graduation ceremony at Southern High School in Santa Rita. The ceremony was for students who didn't graduate at end of their school year because they were lacking the credits needed to get their diplomas. That all changed, however, today after these students completed and earned the credits needed after attending summer school. Congratulations, Rainbow Class of 2021. He has graced our radio airwaves and TV screens for years. And this morning, in front of loved ones and colleagues, KUAM's own Andy Wheeler was presented the Governor's Award. Andy, who know, who's known for his humor and his community involvement, will be leaving off island this week for much needed medical care. Sharing the same sentiments as many of this island, Acting Governor Josh Tenorio pointed out that Andy is an excellent part of this community and will always be part of this community. We're all very optimistic and we're praying that this is all going to work out because you are really a stellar person. Um, I've never seen you in media. You've always had so much integrity and joy. You've brought a lot of smiles, a lot of heart to a lot of people on this island. And I really do think that all of that love is going back into you um, for really what I think is going to be a, um, a good way for you to work this out. And when this works out, you need to come back home because yeah. Guam is your home. It's such an honor to receive this because, uh, as I always say, uh, just a dude that was doing his job, you know, uh, and doing the right thing. Uh, but what I did want to say, uh, it's really important to me, and I think Chris can attest to this, is that uh, when you guys do see me on stage or on TV, uh, you know, you, you hear my voice, you see my face, but what everyone doesn't see is the huge army of people uh, that made those events happen. We will definitely miss Andy, and we are sending him off knowing how much he was an integral part of KUAM and our lives. Tune in immediately after the newscast for a special news extra as we bid Andy a fond farewell. Coming up, sports with Dave Delgado. Keep it here. You're watching KUAM. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Here is the perfect chicken finger. Four of them, actually. They're hand battered. They're cooked to order. And made with love. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers will make you say, Oh, yeah. Raising Cane's Chicken Fingers. One love. Do you feel like you're missing out on something? Make life more rewarding with Pacific Points. Earn and redeem points for bill rebates and free load at IT&E. Discounts on fuel at Shell vouchers at Foodies, and United Mileage Plus Miles. You can even pay with Pacific Points at it &E, Shell, and Foodies. Pacific Points. Do more, get more. 
KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and Safe Travels pledge to maintain health and safety standards to get Guam back on track. Log on to visitguam.com to see how your business can receive the designation, what businesses in our community are Guam Safe certified, and have the WTTC Safe Travel certified. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with some youth basketball highlights from the National Training Center in Teason. Check it out. The Guam Basketball Confederation and KFC teamed up to bring back youth basketball. The KFC Youth Basketball Circuit kicked off with eight and under, 12 and under, and 14 and under games played at the GIGO FD and National Training Center gyms. Just to see the kids come out here, play basketball, have fun, and see the fans come out. It's been amazing. So thank you to GBC and KFC for putting on this awesome tournament. First uh, youth tournament since COVID, so everybody excited. Can't wait to you know continue to build on this progress. Games in the 14 under division continue this week at the FD Phoenix Center. The purpose of the tournament is to keep our youth active and engaged in team sports, says GBC President EJ Calvo. This tournament will also kick off a series of youth basketball tournaments throughout the next few weeks. It's the perfect time for the youth to come out and you know try to fill the void and you know just see better competition and see uh, bigger goals, bigger end game for them and opportunities. So a great stepping stone, you know, coming out with the AU, the 12 view to start. We got the 14 U started this weekend, so I'm excited to see what's to come with the, the younger generation. With the success of our men's national team program, now is the time to build our talent pool. Men's national team coach EJ Calvo adds that we are excited to organize youth basketball competition this summer and help coaches and clubs provide a positive outlet for kids. We are focused on working with clubs to develop Guam's future talent and inspire our community through the sport. These kids playing on the basketball court, these kids are the future of Guam basketball. So starting at a young age, Guam basketball is able to locate the talent, you know, and groom them as they grow up into, you know, different levels of competition. So right now we're starting at the 15U level national team, 17U, 17U. We've got a great facility, so hopefully all these kids can grow up with aspirations to be, you know, represent the men and women's national team of Guam. Special thanks to KFC for sponsoring this summer's youth basketball circuit. Proceeds generated from operations of these summer's tournaments will directly benefit our Guam National U-17 teams as they prepare to travel to the FIBA Oceana Championships in Samoa in December. Keeping with news out of the Olympic Games, Guam is on display at the Surf Museum. A picture submitted by former Guahan Napu President Willie Byerly shows Kenny Pierre catching a wave. Make sure to check out NBCOlympics.com for all the updates, pictures, and highlights. Tonight at 7 p.m. on KUAM TV 8, the greatest of all time, Simone Biles, leads the U.S. team as women's gymnastics begins, while Katie Ledecky and Caleb Dressel both defend Olympic golds. The Tokyo Olympics tonight right here on NBC KUAM TV 8. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. GU Self Storage, conveniently located near the Harmon McDonald's, offers fully covered loading and unloading area with individual pin-coated gate and door access. Call us today at 648-7867 for more information. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. 
Express preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press Loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert Smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. Get up and move, Guam! Join the mayors of Talafofon in Ilohan for Haan and Minagov, a great day to celebrate the reopening of our island at the Valley of the Ladi. Saturday, July 31st from 10 to 5 p.m. Local artists, farmers, and Guam-made products will be on hand while you enjoy performances from our best cultural entertainers and musicians. Enjoy the finest food that Southern Guam has to offer. Help us open our newest attraction, the Micronesia Cultural Village. Tickets can be purchased online at valleyofthelady.com. Haan and Minagov is brought to you by the Guam Visitors Bureau, Guam Economic Development Authority, Valley of the Ladi, Jungle Riverboat Cruise, Kloppenberg Enterprises, Para Ipribetsu Itautauta, the Guam Brewery, Island Beverage Distributors, and the stations of KUAM. <laughs> Just wash it later, bro. I'll ask your mommy to do it for you since you still live at home. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know how to do my own laundry. laundry? And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Welcome back. As the island and its tourism industry reopens, we continue with our weekly segment highlighting some of the island's businesses who are Guam Safe certified by the Guam Visitors Bureau and have the World Travel and Tourism Council's safe travel stamp. Tonight, we feature the Guam Premier outlets. Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase is brought to you in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau. Suzanne Perez. I'm the shopping center manager for the Guam Premier Outlet. Like the overall mission of the program, we wanted to rebuild our customers' confidence as they come back to GPO to shop. Uh, we take a lot of pride in the work that we've done to ensure the safety of our customers and our employees, all while following the local government's health and safety guidelines. We proudly display our WTTC stamp on our entrance doors, on our social media sites, and on our website. Basically, it means that GPO's safety protocols are in line with the COVID-19 protocols um, basically around the world and is recognized by all those in the visitor industry and that's very important to us as um, as well as the whole island in general because tourism is a big part of our economy and we are very happy to have our WTTC stamp uh, displayed throughout our mall. have a no mask, no entry policy, and we will continue enforcing this policy as long as we have that um, mandate in place by the local government. So as you enter our doors, all of our entrances are manned by either our, our, our employees or security. They will take your temperature at the entrances, make sure that you don't have a fever. They also ensure that you're wearing a mask. Uh, we have hand sanitizer stations uh, throughout our mall, on our main level, as well as in our food court. We have directional arrows on our floors and we put those in place so that we can create um, a one-way in and one-way out flow of traffic so people aren't bumping into each other on our busy days. 
Awesome. AMI, our service provider, also sanitizes the food court as well as all high touch areas on our main shopping floor three times a week with their electrostatic device. Everything that we've put in place since last year, we are 100% ready to welcome back our visitor industry. Uh, we've implemented and enforced our COVID-19 SOP for well over a year now, and we're still going strong with that. We have a system in place and it's worked for us. Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase is brought to you in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Happy Monday birthday on this July 26th to Thomas John Chong Salas, wishing our baby boy a beautiful first birthday blessing as you are a special blessing from our Heavenly Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, as well as your older brothers and sisters. Your shoutouts from Amelia, Manuel, Ariel, Arya, Jude, Jace, Matthew, and Anastasia. And from Mommy and Daddy. They're very proud of you. Elijah Antonio Cruz Tenorio, happy birthday to you, to this baby shark-loving four-year-old. We love you to the moon and back. From Mommy Shark, Daddy Shark, Grandma, and Papa Shark. Feel free at home to go ahead and sing the song. Go for it. And happy belated birthday wishes to Kaylee Aloka Ekfaji, turning 14 on the 24th. As we watch you grow every day into a young lady, remember mom and dad love you today, tomorrow, and every day. Happy birthday, Kaylee, from mom, dad, and also Alana, Hayden, Gavin, Isaiah, Sonia, and baby sis, Emberly. And also Kolea Marlene Sham. Happy birthday from papa and grandma, as well as Coco, Kai Kai, mommy, 